to the film for this incredible turnout that we have on this nice spring evening. I'm Nikki Kolb. I'm the office administrator and fundraising coordinator at Nova, New Hampshire, and that's the Northeast Organic Farming Association of New Hampshire. Our mission is to help people build local, sustainable, healthy food systems by actively promoting regenerative, ecologically sound gardening, farming, and land care practices for healthy communities. Through my work with NOFA, I see the incredible agricultural community we have in our state and how you are all a part of that. And I'm thrilled to be here to chat with this great group of leaders in New Hampshire's farm and food community. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Jenny and Red River Theaters, for hosting this event. I personally became interested in agriculture about six years ago when I lived in a very big house in Boston with a lot of roommates. We composted, we had a bountiful garden, and hosted a CSA pickup site. At the time, I admit I had never gardened before, and I had never heard of a CSA either. But I can simply remember realizing that I had also never tasted such delicious vegetables. So since then, I've wanted to learn more about our farming and getting back to nature nourishes people and the land. So with that in mind, I have to say my biggest takeaway from the film is Wendell's reflection on keeping the culture in agriculture. That idea seems just as poignant today as in his 1970s debates with Secretary Butts. We have an enormous country with many urban, suburban, and rural communities and differing values. And add to that, in our fast-paced lives, it's easy to become disconnected from farmers, food, and our environment. I read that in just one century, the total number of US farmers has decreased to one-third of what it was in 1910. Meanwhile, our global population has increased by 7 billion people. So what does this all mean for the future of agriculture, organic farming, and small family farms? Answering that may take longer than we have. <laughs> so I'd like us all to hear from our culture's experts and learn how they relate to this thought-provoking film. So please give a hand to our speakers. We have here first to my right, Dan Kilrain of Worksong Farm in Hopkinton. And then we have Dan Pryle in the middle, who is the Community Food and Outreach Specialist from the Northeast Office of NCAT, the National Center for Appropriate Technologies. And the furthest to my right is Larry Fletcher, a vegetable ranch in Warner. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, I'm. <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Dan Kilrain. Um, uh, yeah, my wife Abby and I uh, run the Works on Farm in Washington. Um, we've been there for about eight years now. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess um, a after watching this film, really, um, I would say my, my biggest impression is that uh, unlike those farmers, uh, the tobacco farmers in the 70s, um, I, my wife and I have been very lucky and, and not really had to deal with a lot of the pressures that they dealt with. Um, and uh, probably, probably uh, we should thank people like Wendell Berry uh, for writing about those things and teaching our parents about those things who taught us about those things. So uh, that's all I'll say. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dan McCryle. As Nikki said, I work for the National Center for Appropriate Technology which is an organization founded back in the 1970s when appropriate technology was something that most people would have read about in the newspaper. Um, nowadays, basically, we've replaced that with the word sustainability. Uh, you can think of us as a national, national center for sustainability. 
Uh, our biggest program, the ASHRA program, is designed to provide technical assistance to farmers. So when Nikki calls me an expert and, and when Jemmy thanks me for coming here, the truth is that I'm only here because these two are here. Um, and my job right now is to support our farmers um, and to help maintain this imageable world that Wendell Berry is trying to, to give us. This uh, agrarian revolution that we can change our world simply by getting our hands a little dirty. So I'm, I am always moved by Wendell Berry's words and I'm always inspired by them. And it's part of why I do the work that I do. Thank you, Larry Pleasure of uh, Vegetable Ranch, Warren, New Hampshire. Uh, I guess this year will be my 20th year as being a certified organic grower. Um, we do CSAs out on the table out in the hallway. There's some information from local harvest CSA, which we run, or which we're a multi-farm CSA, which we're part of, a small CSA that we run, and also there's our card. We do a, what we call an easy share. It's an email list. And it's, it's like a CSA only. There's no obligation. If you want to buy it that week, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. And we'll tell you what's in the share each week. Um, I found this film very difficult to watch. Um, I'm curious. I don't know when this film was made. I'm curious to know when it was made. Last year. Was it? Yeah. Um, it as, as a fairly long time organic grower, um, it, it's the same problem but a different page, I think. The page is turned, and now for local small organic growers like myself, um, the problem isn't just industrial agriculture, it's industrial organic agriculture. and and foreign organic may be agriculture. And it's the hoops one has to jump through to get your products into those big grocery stores that we all know about. So we are fortunate in selling uh, uh, lots of our produce to Concord Co-op, uh, A Market in Manchester. We have a, a good relationship with Congress Hospital. Um, so those sort of outlets are the sort of outlets that really are sustaining our farm. Um, but it, it, you know, it is the same sort of problem. It's the problem of, of um, can you make a sustainable living when you're competing with uh, broccoli that's you know, shipped by, ship by boat from New Zealand. I don't know. <laughs> um, the other thing that struck me about the film that I found maybe a little more upbeat was his early on, he talked about idealism. And of course, this time of the year, you know, he's right. You know, this year, my farm is going to be the greatest, most perfect <laughs> farm <laughs> ever. And um, that will get pulled away as the year goes on. <laughs> I know, Nikki, you've got uh, questions for these folks, but I'm, I'm curious, just a quick show of hands, how many of you consider yourself a farmer anywhere on the spectrum? You put plants in the dirt, you maybe even garden over the summer, um, maybe you are a, a hobby farm, maybe you've got a half a million acre business, or half a million, so just curious, I'm seeing what, half the hands in the room? Thank you. That's great. So we're happy to take questions to the panel. Is there anyone that has some questions? Do you like to raise your hand? Any question? Thank you. Great. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, actually, thank you very much, Larry, for some of your comments. Um, I don't want to flip it around to the focus not so much on farmers, but the focus on consumers. Uh, one of Wendell Berry's comments, I think, is that eating is an agricultural act. Um, and as consumers of food, 
we really need to think of what is it that we eat. Uh, we don't eat just the carrot, but we eat the labor that goes into the carrot. We eat the um, love that goes into the carrot. We eat the soil that comes out of that production method. Um, so maybe if you could address the question of, as consumers, what is it that you want us to ask? I think that's a great question. Who would like to answer first? I guess selfishly I'll say, you know, you need, I want you to focus on what distinguishes our produce from the produce that's uh, maybe in Whole Foods or whoever. Um, ours is fresh, ours is tasty, ours is definitely certified organic. Um, and you need to look at the nutrition. Um, unfortunately, there's the movement these days to say that uh, I've got to be careful. Produce grown in um, not in soil but in nutrient-filled water, basically, is organic. And I, I'm a hardcore organic guy, and I don't believe that. And I don't believe that the nutrition you get from those sort of products are the same as what you get from my product. So I want you to know what the nutritional value is in the food you're eating. I want you to know how fresh it is and how recently it was picked and how good it tastes. I would add to this that uh, Earl Butts, the bad guy in our film today, uh, his greatest accomplishment that he believed to his dying day was that we saved the American consumer money. Right? Before Earl Butts, the American consumer was spending up to 40% of his or her take home pay every month on food. Nowadays that's down to anywhere from 10 to 15%. And we all know this, we were all raised this way, but you get what you pay for. And it's that simple. And what we're paying for is petroleum byproducts that we're now ingesting. You can tie some pretty direct linkages from this policy of go big or go home, adapt or die, you can tie that straight to our American healthcare system today. It's, this is, to me, the consumer needs to realize that um, in, a, in a very simple way, our power has been taken away from us. We don't have the ability to choose the vegetables we want, the food that we want, to put into our bodies and make ourselves healthy. It's, to make a choice right now between a CSA share that's going to cost me money that I theoretically need somewhere else versus going to the dollar store and picking up a, a box of mac and cheese. And that was a power that was taken away from us. What Wendell Berry is reminding us is that we can take that back. Right? By choosing the food we eat, or by making our own food, growing our own food, raising our own animals, we can take back a lot of that power. Um, I, I, I really agree with Larry as far as um, our, our product really starts with the soil, not a nutrient solution. <laughs> um, so, so I guess maybe the, the, the thing to ask your farmer is, uh, you know, how do you treat your land? How do you treat your soil? Because um, inherently, farming uh, is is pretty unnatural. Um, <clears throat> I, I like the, the metaphor of the uh, of Wendell Berry looking through his grid-shaped window at the natural world because that's kind of what farming is. We're, we're trying to impose some order on, uh, on nature, and we're, we're trying to uh, rearrange it kind of the way we want it to be, and then take, take something from that to, uh, you know, food, food to eat. So, um, if you look at it from that perspective, uh, I guess, the way we look at it is we're we're trying to kind of make up for that and um, and and almost 
any reparations for <laughs> for taking taking away, and, and we're trying to uh, do as much right to the land as we can, and hopefully, um, <clears throat> hopefully, you'll be able to to taste it in the, in the food that comes from you know farms from your Thank you. Thank you. All right. I see a hand right there. Hi, my name is Judith. Um, I'm curious. I think um, once Wendell Berry wrote about putting things in between yourself and the land when you're working it, and he was talking about using draft horses, and um, he says, like, I think he says that. Um, using a tractor with the land is like making love with boxing gloves in the sense that it, you're putting more in between you and the land. And so I'm curious though, and I know he continues to write with a typewriter, um, is it realistic to be able to use draft horses and to use these old technologies that we have in, if you look at, you know, the current agricultural um, situation and how do you guys within modern technology that you have, are there ways and tools and um, moments in which you're able to get back to the land like you were talking about and the importance of, of the, the soil. Um, so I'm curious because I think that um, that's something I've been thinking about and um, it's a hard dilemma for me. So I'm curious to what you guys do. I confess I own a John Deere. <laughs> I, I would love to be able to use draft horses, but I, I'm no longer a young man. <laughs> and so uh, that's not going to happen with me. It's something I have always thought about. It would be a, a cool, great thing to do. Um, and I think it's very much doable. Um, uh, but it's for a younger person, I think. I, I was always, in terms of how we treat the soil, one of Wendell Berry's books, I have no recollection now which one it was. There's basically a line in it about you should only grow crops, cultivate so much land as you have animals available to manure the soil, which always made terrific sense to me. So we, we actually have, that's why we have some cows. <laughs> And we have some some other livestock and, and chickens and things. Um, it's a goal, you know. Do, do we have to buy in commercial organic fertilizers? Yes, we do. Um, but it's something, you know. It's a work in progress, and it's a goal. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with Larry. I I too would love to farm with horses. Um, but I don't, I have a tractor, uh, and I think it's probably doable, but I don't know anything about them, and I don't, uh, I don't, well, I, so, uh, if you're starting, if you're starting out and getting into farming without having generations before you to teach you about it and to have the infrastructure there, um, it's, um, it's, it's, I think.